These are all the propellers I take with me when I'm on the boat. That way I can swap them out. You might break one off. They're made out of cast aluminum, not malleable aluminum like in America or other countries. So when you break a wing off, you just throw it away. And guess what? These propellers only cost $5 a piece. So you throw them away. Now I got three different brands here. Salsa Wang, KKK, and CLP. Salsa Wang, well, there are not very many of them out, so I'm not going to talk about them. But what I'm going to talk about is the CLP and the KKK. Now CLP is a nice shiny prop. Well, although I did buff this one out in the buffing wheel, you can see, wow, it looks like a nice propeller. And it is. I have no problems with this propeller. It's a little lightweight, and that may be good, and it may be bad. It's just a matter of perception. Now here's a uh, KKK, slightly bigger prop. Now I buffed this one out just like I buffed the uh, CLP out, but as you can see, it doesn't have a nice finish. Uh, that's because when they uh, left the factory, the factory didn't buff it out anywhere near as good as they buffed that one out. It's a much heavier prop. You can tell. So which one's better? People think I like CLP because I have CLP set up on this engine, but I have nothing against KKK. I have a KKK set up over there. Now, if I didn't like the KKK, I would have put a CLP on that engine, but I like the KKK. I also like SPS because they're all good. And between these two props, which one would I use? I'd use either one of them because they're just different. They're not exactly the same. This one here is a little lighter, a little shinier. Maybe it'll be a little lighter, it'll beat a higher RPM. Maybe it's a little shinier, it'll cut through the water better. Maybe you put it on the boat and it works the same. Now this KKK, it's a little uh, clunkier, a little heavier, but it still has good performance. If I was on a river that I knew had a lot of rocks, I'd put the KKK on because it's a heavier duty prop. If I'm on a lake, where well, I didn't think I was going to run into any uh, rocks, maybe I'd use the CLP. Now, uh, you can use either one of them, the truth is. So, you see, I got a lot of props here. If I can use either one of them, why do I have so many props? Well, I always keep spares in case one breaks. You might not hit a rock and knock a wing off because it's cast, it just breaks and you throw it away. But there is a few things you can do, like this one here. I. Uh, I dinged up here. You can see I had a ding there and I ground it out with the grinder. And to make the prop balanced, I ground out a place on the other side out of a good wing. Just to make it so it's balanced. It doesn't, so if it's not balanced, it's going to vibrate. So if you look at these props here, I got a lot of them. Go all the way from, I guess this from here is, I get organized here. The smallest prop I have here, this is a seven and three quarters inches. And the biggest one I got is nine inches or slightly less than nine because I ground out that little notch. So if I'm gonna use all these props at certain times, when do I use them? See, I was on a lake and I wanted to save gas and I was gonna go long distance or something like that and I wasn't gonna use the high RPM and go as fast as I could. I'd probably put the bigger prop, engine wood lug, but I wouldn't reach the highest RPM, which normally would not be a good idea, but if I wanted to cruise, I'd hit the 9-inch prop in there and I'd cruise. Now, if I had two people in the boat or a lot of gear, the 9-inch prop is going to lug too much, so I wouldn't use it. So I'd probably use the 8.5 maybe. So say I uh, had the 9-inch on there and I put the 8.5 on, and uh, hey, the 8.5 worked pretty good. And uh, I reached about 3,500 RPM, which is the... Uh, where the maximum amount of power works on the engine. Now what you want to do is you want to match the prop to the power curve. So when the engine meets its highest power around 3400 RPM, that's the prop that's going to work the best under a specific condition. Like you might be in a muddy water, you want a smaller prop. You might be in a seven and three quarter prop. If you're on clean water, maybe you want an eight and a half. But under most conditions, 
you're going to find the 8-inch prop is going to work pretty good for you. Now you say, well, why doesn't the manufacturer just uh, tell you what kind of prop to use on it? And you would email the manufacturer, they'd say put an 8-inch prop on it because it's in the middle. And the 8-inch prop is going to work the best under most conditions, and I usually have an 8-inch prop on my boat. But certain times, I want to use a smaller prop or a bigger prop. Now, uh, say I was going up rapids, and I had an 8 half inch prop on there, and the, the engine wasn't reaching 3,400 RPM, which is where you want it to be in the power curve. So I just put the prop on there that would make the engine reach the, uh, the correct power curve, RPM, and I'd be good to go. Now, um, say you want to get into the prop here that was uh, specifically matched a certain condition. And say we're going to be in a, some kind of a race and you wanted to see the maximum speed your boat can go or something like that. So what you do is you get a prop on there that you put on there that's going to be a little bit too big for the engine. Say maybe a 9 inch prop here. So I put the 9 inch prop in here and I go off and I give a trial run. And I can only reach 3,100 RPM. So that means the engine's lugging. I want to reach 3,400 RPM where the highest power curve is. So what do I do? I, I draw a line here and I grind off something off of the uh, wing here. And I do the same, the same amount off of this side. You want to make a balance. Then I put it back on the shaft. I go out and I make another RPM. Oh, I can reach now I can reach 3,200 RPM. That's better, right? So then I take the prop off, take the grinder out, and I grind a little bit more off, a little bit more off here. And it's important to, to grind off this, the right amount. You measure from the center out, center out, center here out, and so forth. And you can eye it out. It's not a rocket science. But you want to make it equal on both sides of the prop is balanced. So I grind a little bit more off. I put on and... Pretty soon, I'll find that I reach 3,400 RPM. And I've reached 3,400 RPM. That's the most power the engine is going to put out. I'm good to go. Now, what surface propping is, and I'll, um, not all on long tail surface prop, the ones that go fast surface prop, it's what the hydroplanes do. So you have the tail so it's only halfway submerged. Half of your prop is out of the water. So one of these uh, wings is going to be out of the water at all times. And it's shooting water up in the air, a big rooster tail about 15 feet high. And because you only have half the prop submerged, you're going to be uh, less drag. If you have fully submerged, see, you're going to have a lot of drag on the prop because the prop's having to fight its way through the water. But when you raise the prop up out of the water, you know, you're going to get more RPM and you're going to go faster. It's, it's just a phenomenon that people have known about for a long, a long time. Anyways, this is about props and all the different things you can do. And uh, the thing about surface propping is, what we're talking about here with high performance props and grinding out a prop to match the power curve and surface propping and all that, a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people just put the prop in the water and they go. And maybe their engine doesn't reach the highest RPM. Maybe they don't go as fast as they could go, but maybe they don't care. And that's fine. But if you're into, you know, tweaking an engine out and getting it to work as best as you can, you put the right propeller on there for the conditions you normally use, and you might want to grind it down if it's lugging. And uh, the thing to remember about surface propping is balance. Now, if you see my videos, what I talk about the most is balance. And this includes balance on surface propping as well. And the propeller that you use the most and, the, and uh, it's going to give you the best surface propping uh, use. Now, I don't change my balance point on my engine ever. Once I got an engine balanced out that works with the two or three props, I'm good to go. But on this boat here, I can take my hands off, surface prop, and go. Now, admittedly, I have to have my hand close to the tiller. And if the prop wants to jump up out of the water and uh, hit a, a wave or something like that, I'm going to have to pull up on the handle. But uh, you, you want the boat balanced out so you don't have to uh, struggle with it. You, you don't want to have to fight anything. 
And that's the most important thing that I want to stress in all these videos is you want ease of use with the boat. I don't use the standard engine mount. Uh, this is a, I think it's quarter inch steel here. And uh, I made this one myself. And uh, I've modified them and all that, but I found out that it's easier to make one yourself than modify what they got. And I don't want to say which, which manufacturer it is, but these uh, engine mounts aren't what they used to be. Uh, some of the newer ones, they don't have adjustable. So you can move the engine back and forth on the mount to get a balance, which to me seems stupid. So I make my own. I make what works out best for me. I try to get as light as I can because I got to lift the darn thing. Now, if you're dealing with this one over here, this is a KKK setup, six and a half horsepower. It's got a galvanized type of a shaft, with, which looks more like water pipe, a little bit heavier. And it's got a, a KKK setup. This one's about 20 years old. But because it's a six and a half horsepower engine, you can easily lift it, even with the KKK. Now, if I put a CLP setup on here, it'd be a little bit lighter, but not that much lighter. So, KKK, CLP, not much of a difference when it really comes down to it. Now, there is the uh, SPS setup, which is the one that I would buy next because I do not have one. But I do know a lot about SPS setups. I've seen a lot of them. I've talked to a lot of people who have them. And everybody's happy with the SPS setup. So I would buy an SPS setup in a heartbeat if I needed one. And next time I need one, I'm going to buy one. So then I'll have a KKK, SPS, and CLP. And guess what? I'm, I'm almost positive I'm going to like them all for slightly different reasons. I'm betting that all three setups... SPS, KKK, and CLP is going to work good for anybody who buys them. And uh, they simply cost just a little bit of money. So if you spend $150 for a setup, and maybe you want to try another one, it's only $150 for a long tail setup. Buy another one. Try it out. You might have fun comparing it like I do here. But in the end, I think what you're going to find out is the same thing that I found out. Same, same. So my Meep and Ha, you can use either one you want. And this is Sean, Walker Tongdi. I'm going to go boating in the Mekong soon. Uh, keep on the lookout for a video about that in about another month or so here. And until then, don't forget to have fun.